great song, man. <laughs> I love your politeness, dude. This song is on Spotify, baby. Ho, 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 Heat Nation. Welcome on in. Thanks for checking us on out. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. Shout out to my guy Jaime there, huh? Likes the song. I thought that he was being pop, uh, very uh, uh, polite when he was on the radio show earlier in the week, but I felt like that was a. Uh, I thought that was a, a much more genuine response that he uh, he enjoyed it, and I appreciate him giving a uh, a couple of minutes today at Heat Camp. And uh, if you guys would like, here we go. Jaime Jaquez Jr., a little one-on-one ski after he practiced today. Sorry, but we um, That's fine. only got a bunch of games so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it like trying like, to bring the main one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My guys are in and out. Like, how do you just trying to deal with that and just being yourself and all the guys are? Um, you know, you know, just trying to fill in my role. Uh, you know, step up when guys are down. Um, I think I learned something in college. My coach always told me the best ability is availability. So if you're available and ready to play. You know, you're going to get more uh, of, of a chance to get in. So that, that's really the way I look at it. Oh, was this a uh, ranking that was from out like Oliver Schiller that you were like the highest now ranking in your draft class? Mm-hmm. Is rookie of the year like how serious a goal was that for you? I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, it'd be nice, but it's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, I really want to just help this team get back to winning the championship. Uh, that's kind of, you know, the whole goal. It's what it's about here. You know, the individual accolades are one thing, but the main thing is the winning a championship here. So that, that's that's what the main goal is. That's what we focus on. Uh, but a lot of your teammates, they, they are ch- like whenever something good happens, they put first team. First team is that like from they're putting you're going to be this first team all rookie? Yeah, I mean, I think you know all that stuff will come as long as we keep winning and playing well. You know, I think that's just the most important thing. Is just you know you put the team first, and all the individual stuff will come along. So you worry about that stuff after the season. Uh, you know, that's not something that I necessarily look at every day. I just try to focus on winning games. Is there um, a moment at all of, like, when you're playing so much in the fourth quarter, is there a moment where Spoh either came to you, or is there a moment in the game where he knew he was going to trust you late? Um, I mean, not necessarily came to me. He just threw me in there and was like, let's see what you can do. And, you know, I just keep trying to, you know, make the right play, uh, play smart. And uh, do the little things that are going to help us win. Uh, last one for you. Uh, have you, since you got drafted, got any good advice from Pat Riley? Of just you know the way it goes about here, or the way to go about this season? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I think we talk a lot about other things as well. You know, you know, he always talks about my hair. He just tells me to keep my fire going. Um, you know, just keep 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 us on track, keep us winning. Um, and those are the things that he lo- he tells me. Really appreciate Jaime giving me uh, some time after practice today, especially after joining the show this week. Very generous with his time, the rookie. Uh, great dude, and uh, have enjoyed covering him so far in his NBA career. And it is going to be interesting because, you know, so I don't understand. The thing that I was referencing there was like this hoops hype global ranking, right? And I don't know what the hell this means. I just, it's a list. I see it go by, and I saw that at one point this week he had passed Victor Wembenyama. I don't know. I don't, I think Victor just had a 2020 um for for the Spurs so maybe that'll change I'm not really positive but I do think that it is interesting that you had this sensation coming into the league everybody thought oh this guy I mean he's not gonna lose he's gonna be amazing but let's be real about it I mean like Victor Wembanyama, as amazing as he may be and watching him uh he's an extraterrestrial right like he's crazy even though Duncan Robinson snatched his soul um that team has lost 16 in a row dude 16 in a row. I mean, you have two teams right now in this league that have losing streaks of at least 16 games. Them and the Detroit Pistons. And know that there's chalk full of young talent. Um, and that's great. But Jaime Jaquez Jr. is not only on a team with a winning record, but his team really relies on him. And I think that if you were to talk to Heat fans about what has been the thing you've enjoyed the most this season... I think to a man, everyone's going to say Jaime Jaquez Jr. and what he has brought to the table. And I think the thing that has been interesting about him, uh, talked a little bit about this with uh, Kevin Love today, about like what do you attribute him being able to have the trust of the coaching staff to play these games? And, you know, he put a lot of it to man, you know, and Kevin Love, UCLA guy. So he's going to talk about his program. He's like, this dude was in big games at UCLA. You had a little bit of a relationship with Jaime coming into the league. Was there a thing when he got here with you guys that showed he was going to be ready for those fourth quarter minutes, that he was going to get so much trust? I mean, I know it's obviously a, a different league. Um, you know, grown man's league, 82-plus games. Uh, you know, it's a grind. A lot's expected of you being, 
you know, a first round pick or a high pick, but he came in, uh, you know, after UCLA being in big situations um, and made for those moments. He was the guy in those moments. So just seeing that level of maturity, uh, that level of giving himself up for the team, but also knowing where his strengths are and continuing to get better within those and, uh, you know, taking care of so much in the work that he puts in. So, uh, you know, it's a bit amazing to see his growth even so far, uh, just over the first 20 plus games, uh, just going to work and you know, we want him to be himself. And he's not going to shy away from that. And UCLA, like, come on, man, you're talking about college basketball royalty. This guy was an absolute stud for them and he has walked into this league. I will say he has never really gone into the whole, am I surprised? Do I feel all shucks? No, I think that this guy, all he wanted was an opportunity. All this guy wanted was to get a chance to come here and showcase his stuff. But I think the thing that you marvel at, I mean, like, the only thing that anyone's going to really throw at him because it's painted with a broad brush is that, oh, this guy went to college for a long time. You know, like this guy went to college for four years. That's not the norm. Typically, when you go to college for four years, you know, they, they kind of just brush you aside and think, ah, that's it. That's all she wrote, right? But for him, I mean, does not this is not a guy who does not have many years to go and prove. He's only 22 years old. He is, you know, we've seen the offensive bag is just ridiculous with what he's able to do with that footwork. He's a very willing passer. Um, and there's something to be said for how the Miami Heat are trusting him late in these games because we see it's not usually a team that trusts the young. They don't really go with their rookies often. They have to know everything. And this guy, the knowledge that he has already brought for Eric Spolster to trust him in the fourth quarter and all of the fourth quarter in these games is pretty bananas. It's 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 pretty crazy that he's able to uh, that he's able to go out this. And I get it. Like it's not you, you know it, it it's almost become like this uh, this stain on you if you go to college for all four years and and if you do it you know maybe you'll be a role like Jay Rich. You know Jay Rich went to college. I think I think Jay Rich was all four years at, at Tennessee. Second round pick. You know, what's what's the best gonna be? But the guy is, you know, did come in and was trusted right away. Um, but I think for for Jaime, there there just seems to be a different kind of swagger to him. Like that guy, he's gonna find his way to go get a bucket. He's gonna find a way to go get to his sweet spots. Um, we have seen like look, teams are gonna challenge him late. Uh it'll be it is gonna be interesting when you get to these, and I think he's holding his own okay, and 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 he's made some, you know, he's he's got to be in some tough challenges, and guys have made some tough buckets against him, you know, whether it be you know Spida or Jalen Brunson or some of these guys. So it is going to be interesting late in these games. Is Spo going to roll with this, especially when Tyler's back? I don't know, but it's. I mean, you can't say that he is. He's driving you nuts when he's on the floor. Everything just seems to be electric. Like his teammates like passing to him. They like believing in him late in a shot clock. You trust him with the ball in his hands because you feel like he's going to get to either a spot where he really trusts himself or he's going to go find the open man. And that trust is there. And as he said with uh, his, uh, his message that he got from Pat Riley, you know, keep that fire. You know, just keep that fire, keep the drive. And I do think that you see he plays with an energy. He plays with a passion. He plays with a fire. But he also doesn't play, you know, at this reckless pace. He pl- he can play at his own tempo. He can bring the game um to to he can bring the game to his terms, which is really rare. I mean, I think we see like with Jovic, right? It's been a fascinating thing. But Jovic, he kind of only has one speed, and that speed is go. And if it's not go, he and you give him time to think, it kind of screws with his mind a little bit, and that's probably one of the big reasons why he's not out there is that when he has to think, and it's not just a read and react, and it's not just get a ball and, and go run, then you kind of you kind of junk up the uh, the system there. It's not, it's not as pristine. It's not as clean. It's not running the way that it absolutely should. So I really hope that Jaime does get into this, uh, that, that he does get discussion. I love the fact that his team – Every you know he wins rookie of the month. They're all putting the term first team on him, and, and I think that's cool. That the first goal is hey, just be first team all rookie. And if rookie of the year should happen, 
That would be amazing. This feels like a year because of how bad Wembenyama's team is and how good the Thunder are. This feels like a year where it's going to be hard to pry that from Chet Holmgren. It is. It's going to be a hard year to go out there and and take that from him, you know, which he's not a real rookie. I mean, he wasn't, you know, he he's not a real rookie. He was he's he was hurt last year. But we've been at this debate before. I think that because of he's he's a bit of a he's a bit of an NBA Twitter darling. And he's been really good too. I don't want to don't want to hate on the guy. But he uh this this is this I don't think is going to be as heralded a debate. You know, one of the things that drove me nuts even a couple of years back when it was Zion and Ja is they were good, but I just felt and it wasn't even like I was trying to argue for this guy, but I felt like it was ridiculous. Like nobody even mentioned Kendrick Nunn, right? Kendrick Nunn was winning Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month basically every month. He like basically swept the award. And nobody even like thought about it for him, which was nutty. The guy was having this incredible season for the Miami Heat. He was their starting point guard on a team that was surprising everybody. And, you know, for him to be just kind of like never mentioned in the rookie of the year category. Now he ended up being first team all rookie, which is probably where Jaime's headed. But I would like for everybody who's going to talk Wemben Yama and Chet Holmgren, I would love it if we give some actual consideration here to Jaime Hawkes Jr. Because the dude is a freaking baller. Pat Riley's right. That hair is excellent. 